Hey, I was just looking at some archives here, and I found these two pictures of this boy, yeah, I'm president. And, uh, you know, they, they're very symbolic. And I, I said, well, look, oh, this is something to think about here. So this guy in this bicycle here, yeah, I, I, I don't know him real good, but I, I trust that this young boy here, how he's riding a bike and everything else. You see that car? That car decided to race with him, and you notice he's ahead of the car, right? I know the car can't start, or he's having problems, he's drunk or something. And this reminds me of Romney, you know? Romney figured, like, shit, man, I can walk past this guy. Well, the guy's on a bicycle, man. You know, I know you could walk fast and so forth, but that bike can go fast, too. And, um, you know, it's like, uh, you know, he won the race, okay? Now then, we come on, and, and uh, we have some debt problems, and up comes the fiscal cliff. And this guy is an expert baseball um, player, because it looks as if he'd be playing this baseball before riding his bike, I think. He looks younger there. So he has a long history of, of swinging and bat and so forth. So I don't know. Uh, it, it might be the ball uh, is ready to come or pass or whatever. But I guess what? He could hit you on knee with that, hit you across the yards. And then he's like, you better get it, uh, you know, away from that cliff because he can knock you over that cliff and, and save the day. So, um, you know, Romney was no match for this little boy on the bike. And then I think also the fiscal cliff thing. Because you see, the funny thing with the fiscal cliff is this. They want to come with all kind of sliders and all kind of fastball and thinking that they get past the bat. But uh, there's a whole bunch of people picnicking at the bat there. So if you were to hit the ball, you know, way everybody would be cheering and then those who are sitting on eating at the bat, they will join the fun. But if you come through the fastball and, and it miss that bat and hit the people are sitting back there, somebody you hit in the head and going to die. So it's, a, it's not about him per se. It's about people at the back there, the citizens, you know, the corporations, the image of the country. And you recall the last time the uh, standing up for these people decided to lower the, 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 credit, the debt, debt rating. And so, uh, you know, you don't want to try that again because some people are saying that. Canada and other places have had their debt, their debt uh, ratings lowered, but they recovered. But you know something, you just have to know. The Bible says, "Teach us the number of days, so that we could set our hearts to wisdom." In other words, uh, when am I going to die, so that I can prepare? You know, like the week before, don't go in the streets, stay home, don't drive the car, don't drive, fly the plane, don't play with guns and so on, because. You know, you fly in a plane, you get a heart attack. That's serious. Not only everybody playing and die, but also people on the ground. And yeah, they might have recovered, but you just can't play chicken all the time because you see, uh, you might make a mistake and the car might run over or the train or something or get shooting in the head with the Russian roulette. And I think that uh, this is a time in which um, it's a dangerous time. This is not like 1930s. And I believe that if you make catastrophic mistakes now, um, they're sort of unrecoverable. So, um, I don't want to some funny or so. I mean, no, eight, we almost collapsed. So, we, we are, we are at a dangerous position. And uh, if you don't want to solve problems intellectually, oh, by the way, America and Europe have, um, celebrated themselves as being legal, rational, as opposed to traditional, like in the Middle East and in Africa and other places where it's traditional. This big man says so on his silk without any science, any history, any intellectual process. I say so and it's done. And, and in America, it's supposed to be like, we have consensus. We're going to look at what is best. We're going to look at the history. We're going to look at the economics. We're going to look at the foreign policy and the foreign perception. And we look at uh, people who could be harmed downstream if we let all this water out without warning and so on. And, and this is, I think, that we need to come back to. Legal rationalist. The president, he has uh, the opportunity to do the fiscal uh, planning, fiscal policy. The, the Fed's going to do the monetary policy. And if he wants the money, because with his idea, he wants to expand the economy, he wants to create more jobs, he wants to raise the debt so he could have more resources to um, do what needs to do for Americans, then you just have to cooperate with the president. I mean, you know, in the banana republics, um, the opposition always opposing whether uh, it's necessary or not. They just want the opposition. And hopefully they're going to um, generate some uh, affection with the, with the citizenry that the next round 
they will have some trouble. But this kind of thing here, it, it's it's kind of like suicidal. And um, we've seen in the last election where um, there was no traction. I mean, we didn't even talk about immigration. I mean, you know, don't be out of touch because people are thinking in terms of uh, who really is to be blamed. And I can't blame the president because it's his job to come up with a fiscal policy that is going to serve America. And if you want to oppose it and come up with all this brinkmanship, what are we going to see? This little boy is going to win. He's going to get a couple of home runs on your slate and going to win the innings.